This is the PV Bravo 112, an all-tube American-made amplifier, which I bought from a guy on Craigslist. Great sounding amp. Somebody's dropped a big old carbon British series American-made speaker in the back. But after about uh, 20 years, uh, the, some of the components need to be uh, replaced. So that's what we're going to do here today. So first we have to take out the, uh, the chassis, and I'm going to lay this on its side so that the chassis doesn't fall down after the screws are removed. Take all the wire. Right. So at this point the chassis just lifts out. There it is. This is a little unusual in that the tubes are mounted on the inside of the amplifier. And they got this little cooling fan here to, to keep them cool. So what really needs to be replaced are these large capacitors. See the minus mark? There's a plus and a minus. That's an electrolytic capacitor. Oh, there we go. There's the minus mark on the capacitor. And the plus side would be on this side. So these really need to be replaced. That's how you tell electrolytic capacitor. This one, this one, these are the high voltage power supply capacitors. These are the lower voltage supply, like for the bias circuit. Uh, this is also part of the, uh, part of the uh, high voltage circuit here. Uh, these two, these two also need to be replaced. And uh, the pots need to all be clean. Looks like they're not sealed, so I can squirt some cleaner in there. These are the input jacks. I ordered new input jacks. These do look like they're kind of worn out, so I'm glad I did that. I'm going to replace these. Now, before you mess with this equipment, uh, these capacitors can store very high voltage for a long time. You can get a really nasty shock if you're not careful. So I've used this voltmeter here to measure the voltage across the capacitor to make sure there's none on there. If there isn't, you need to short the uh, positive side of the capacitor to ground using a using a resistor maybe about a hundred thousand ohms and a couple of uh, uh, clip leads and you have to take off these little nuts here holding on these uh, these pots and you're also going to take off the uh, the nuts holding on the the input jacks well, we finally got all the screws out and managed to work it out. It's kind of a difficult job, and uh, I managed to flip the flip the circuit board over, but there's still a couple of wires holding it in there. The only way to to completely get it off is to uh, un unsolder the wires, which I which I really prefer not to do. I'm going to see if I can just work on it the way it is here. All right, I finally got the first capacitor out first big filter capacitor is this one here. Did I, did I show that? Yeah, it went in like this. And as you can see, it was glued in. So this was a real job. I'm going to solder in the first capacitor now. You want the soldering iron. This is a 25 watt soldering iron. That's really all you want for circuit boards. You can get this at Home Depot. You want to touch the iron to both the lead and the copper foil at the same time. And just add enough solder so it flows real good around the connection like that. Don't need a lot. There you go. You do them all the same way. And you just clip off the, the excess wires. And there's the first of several to go. I think probably the best way to remove these capacitors is to clip the lead first. Remove them and then you can easily uh, desolder these wires. I think that's probably the best way to do it without damaging the, the foil, the copper foil, which is uh, 
on the on the solder side of the board. Look at this capacitor. Look at that green stuff. I think this capacitor was blown or leaking, and no wonder I was I was getting some hum. I like using a solder wick to remove the excess solder. You just touch the iron and the wick to the connection, and the foil then, or the wick, sucks up the excess solder. It's probably there are a lot of more sophisticated ways of doing it, but uh, I just find this is works best for me. All right, I just re removed this uh, capacitor on the left, which is from the low voltage low voltage supply. Uh, note the difference in size. Uh, the capacitor on the right, which is the new capacitor, is the exact same value, 2200 microfarads at 35 volts. But look at how much smaller they can make them now. Now what you're looking at is the two speaker output jacks, and it looks like this is also uh, where it gets its ground, where the system is grounded. There's a ground wire on one of these uh, one of these jacks here that uh, runs to the uh, to the board where the where the tubes are. So this is this is I think this is the common ground. But look at all this corrosion uh, around the jacks. So that may not be a that that, that doesn't look like a very good ground to me. So I, I'm going to clean all this up. Okay, we're finally all done. New high voltage capacitors, new low voltage capacitors, all these other little capacitors in here, they're all new. These are low voltage electrolytic capacitors, uh, mostly part of the reverb circuit. But there's, uh, I don't know, maybe about 10 or 12 of them which I've replaced. And that's about really all you have to do with a tube amp like this, all these pots have been cleaned out with a contact cleaner. Square them in there, work them around. Uh, these uh, input jacks are new. They were kind of worn out. Ordered them from PV. And that's pretty much it now. I don't think I replaced anything else. So, oh, these two are a part of the high voltage. Uh, these are the capacitors which filter the high voltage, provide additional filtering to these uh, 12 AX 7 A's, the uh, input stage. So now we're just going to uh, put it all back together and hope it works. Okay, got it all put back together now. Let's fire it up. And it's on. I don't see any smoke. You hear the fan running. Telecaster's plugged into it. So I hear a little bit of hum from the tele. There's also a little a little hum in the reverb circuit. That's probably from the cables which uh, run to the reverb pan. And uh, let's see if there's noise. Yeah. Mission 